Yes, yes, team, and welcome to another episode of the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Today, we have one of my little protégés. I say little, he's actually massive when I met him in real life, Kyle Topping. He's uh, the founder of Trained by Topping, and I'm really lucky because I get to coach coaches that are a lot earlier in the journeys, not just in their coaching and, and, and business worlds, but also just in their life in general. And I do believe that we build programs for the younger versions of ourselves, and in Kyle, I saw a lot of myself. I saw a big heart. He really wants to help people. He's got really genuine intentions, but he was getting stuck in his own way. He was getting stuck in perfectionism, stuck in fear of failure. It was either self-criticism, I'm not enough in various different ways, or looking to the future. This is how it's all going to go wrong. And I spent many years myself in these places. So it was a, an absolute honor to be able to pass on some of the knowledge and the wisdom to, to Kyle and then just have him on the podcast today. Kyle, mate, welcome to the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Pleasure to be here. So in a nutshell, just describe to the audience, what is it that you do and who do you coach? So everything I do is online. So I'd have to fall into the umbrella of online coach and I work with men and women that are looking to regain control of their health, happiness, and confidence by building unbreakable habits. So the main program, which I have, is just called the Train by Topping Evolve program, because that's how I now try and view life, is this constant evolution that people go on. Incredible, incredible. And on the surface, when people land on your page, they see your content, I'll just see Kyle being Kyle. But underneath that, there's been a lot of emotional toil in order to get there and carve that character in this world. What would you say is some of the things that people need to realize? What's the context that people need that you've had to evolve through in order to get there? I would say that my journey into coaching has been similar to some coaches, but different to many. And what I mean by that is I, I'm not someone who has always been in shape. I'm not someone who has always just naturally felt confident in everything in which I've done. I've had to actually work through the process. I've had times whereby I felt really low, really unhappy. And as a result, I feel like I can just deeply resonate with a lot of the people that I now work with because I've had to work through it like them. So therefore I can recognize the same emotions, thoughts, feelings that they might experience and help them to actually move past it to overcome those challenges, hurdles and obstacles and keep progressing towards their goals in the best possible way. Okay. And what do you realize was at the craw the crux of that child of Kyle, how he felt about himself that then led to you coaching the individuals that you do? So the reason that I created the program around the three core pillars of health, happiness, and confidence is because that was exactly what I was searching for when I first started my own body transformation. And that was after finishing university, getting a little bit carried away and just really losing myself, both mentally and physically. I was in an awful position and I just wanted to get back to feeling like me, feeling like I was really able to show up in the world in the best possible way. So those three pillars I feel are essential to actually live a truly fulfilling life. I think you can have a lot of things in your life, but without those, you're always going to be somewhat restricted. I hear you. I hear you. And what is it that made you think, you know what, I need to go and dive into my mindset and mental performance. It's not something that, that a lot of people think to do, but there was something, there was a trigger that made you go, you know what, let's go and do some work on this. For sure. I've always been really intrigued by personal development, mindset, just the different levels of coaching and if I think back to the initial conversation we ever had, I believe one of the things I said to you was I'm on the path to creating a business that's going to be profitable, but isn't actually going to be enjoyable. And that was simply because I was spending so much time in my own head. I was getting so anxious and stressed and overwhelmed unnecessarily that it was actually just taking away my enjoyment of coaching, something that I absolutely love. And something I wake up every single day with immense gratitude to be able to do, but also outside of coaching, like my personal life, my own relationships, my interactions I was having with friends and family and my girlfriend. And that was something that 
really took a while for me to be able to see, but something that when I recognized, I knew that I had to reach out, that I had to get a little bit of support and just find a little bit more balance in my life. And what would you say the most profound shift for you has been? Recognizing that no one is going to be perfect in all areas at all times and understanding what is actually needed to achieve success and just removing that as the sole focus in all areas of my life. Because a lot of the work that we did, it always came back to this idea of trying to hold myself to unrealistic standards, trying to achieve the best that I possibly could, but sometimes then taking that too far. And when inevitably something would come along that would mean I wasn't completely perfect in that area, I then beat myself up. My inner self-talk, it would be very negative, very critical. And that then led me down the route of procrastination, just re-recording all these things that I did, just generally getting really stressed and anxious about anything that I was doing. And like I said, that was just affecting me in all areas. And I just felt on the verge of burnout, which is of course something that no one wants to have to experience. And how is that perfectionism showing up for you? It was showing up in check-ins. It was showing up in WhatsApp communications. It was even showing up in regards to like messaging that I do, be that content or be that even just messaging to like friends and family, like re-recording things, rewriting things, like over-analyzing things. And it's important to be self-aware, but it was getting to the point whereby I was almost preempting what other people were going to think or how they were going to take certain situations or conversations we had, which again is a very tiring and draining thing to do. And it just is not needed in any way, shape or form. And it was really holding me back in lots of areas. And having worked on that and having let that go, cause I do think there is a, and I, I, I read loads of books on perfectionism and I do think there's a fear of letting that go because you associate a lot of success that you've had towards the perfectionism. So you get stuck in this loop, which is, well, if it's the perfectionism that's led to my success up until this now, how could I possibly not do that? As somebody that's overcome that cycle, how has that now played out for you? I think you're completely right. First and foremost, I used to almost tell myself that why would you change something that isn't broken in regards to something that was getting great results, something that was working in regards to scaling the business and so on and so forth. I would say that it's still constantly something I have to be aware of. Like, I don't know if it will ever completely leave me in all honesty, but it's a lot better. And now I think it's actually noticing and identifying little triggers and it's having set things in place that I know can ground me, that I can come back to that, just enable me to have that little bit more control because that word control, it shows up in my life in a lot of ways. And I think it's a very powerful word because when I felt so stressed and overwhelmed, that was what I felt I was lacking. I almost felt like I was just spinning my wheels. I was a little bit out of control. And from the outside looking in, I don't think a lot of people could tell, but from the inside, it was almost every single day felt really difficult it felt like it was taking so much of my energy and effort to be able to do so I think it's mainly just feeling like I have a little bit more structure I have a little bit more routine and again just remembering that there's so much power in authenticity and actually being yourself and being open being vulnerable and actually being honest about the fact that you're not perfect that you're going to make mistakes that you're going to slip up on words or whatever that might be yeah and we've seen that in your content since starting working with us before it is always sort of very, very polished, very sort of just I'm an online coach, but we didn't really know Kyle. Whereas seeing that evolution over time, you're now letting people in to who you are and how you think and how you feel and how you operate. And how has that impacted the type of clients that you're working with? Massively helps because I now feel more comfortable sharing the fact that like everybody, I make mistakes. Like everybody, there's times when I might slightly overconsume on calories or I might miss a session for whatever reason, or maybe I don't hit my steps on that particular day. But my whole messaging now is about consistency over perfection. And as a result of that, and as a result of being such an open book, the conversations I've been able to have with clients and the different topics in which I've been able to help them with has been phenomenal. And I feel that now they're a lot more honest back to me and therefore I can help them more. Because they're not just telling me what they think I want to hear, which I think with a lot of coaches, that's what happens. If 
you're a little bit too harsh on the surface. Sometimes people don't want to actually share with you what's really going on in their world because they don't think you're going to understand. They don't think you're actually going to give them that space and that time to actually be able to feel how they're going to feel, to think how they're going to think, to actually sometimes fail forward fast. So I definitely think there's a lot of benefits from it, both professionally and also personally for me, for sure. And here's the thing. You don't need to win a race by 10 to 20 meters. You only need to win a race by half a centimeter, maybe a centimeter. When I was in software sales, uh, I remember my mentor, Ron, who you've met actually at the TMP event. Yeah. Uh, he took me to uh, a company called Rakuten, who are the fourth largest e-commerce company in the world. They sponsored Barcelona Football Club. Um, it was one of the big dogs, but one of the technologies that I was selling actually wasn't the big dog in the market. It was probably the third best technology. There was two technologies that were better. And I remember being really pissed off about that after I'd done my homework. I've already signed up for the company. Uh, I got promoted pretty quick. So uh, all of a sudden I'm leaving the strategy. And I said, Ron, we've only got the third best product in the market most of the time. What the fuck? Like how? How? And he said, listen, mate. You don't need to have the best technology in the market for you to hit your personal goal. It's time for the company to hit its personal goals. I said, what do you mean? It's like, you don't need to be number one in that space in order for you to win and still achieve what you want out of life. And it's the same for this company. It doesn't need to put in an extra 10 million in investment to try and build out that technology to compete the rest because it's doing what it needs to, to hit its own goals with the resources that it's got. And that was a bit of a mindset shift because that was actually my perfectionism saying, well, I want to have the absolute perfect product in the absolute perfect market. And that's just not how it works. And actually what I had was enough and it definitely helped me surpass my personal goals so much faster. Uh, and it worked out. And I think it's understanding the difference between perfect and enough. And that was a big, big shift for you seeing that, that, well, hang on, does it need to be exactly like that? Or actually is what we have enough? And there's always going to be, that question when you have high standards and you have high expectations there's a difference between a high standard and perfection and enough and it's understanding where those three barriers lie so this might be something that's always on your mind but it's also just having self-awareness actually is this a realistic expectation or am i over rotating on this and as entrepreneurs and coaches it's something that we can hyper fixate on whether that's the program whether that's uh imagery whether that's marketing coaching whatever but it's learning to dumb that down a little bit and being smart enough to know what to do and then dumb enough to actually do it. That's what leads to success, not overthinking or getting stuck in your own head, you know? Yeah, 100%. I think also by doing a lot of work on my own personal values, the things that bring me fulfillment within coaching, outside of coaching across the board, that then actually gave me like the North Star to focus on. Because a lot of the time, otherwise, I was making decisions and doing things that I thought was right, but I didn't really have a particular reference, if that makes sense. Whereas actually getting a little bit more clarity around that, I think that then made the different decisions that I made on a day-to-day -day basis across all areas in my life, again, much easier to make, which reduced that overwhelm. It put me in control. I felt in the driver's seat. And I think that was a really powerful thing that came off the back of that too. So we talked about dialing down the perfectionism to a place where you're in control and, and owning that. Let's talk about fear of failure, because that was a big part of the puzzle. The perfectionism was the self-critical piece, but it was the fear of failure about the world. Talk to me about that. How was that showing up for you? I think I just never fully backed and believed in myself. I think, again, because I'd always been someone who had set very high standards, someone who would work incredibly hard to try and do the best that I could in whatever I was trying to achieve, that I was just so scared of not actually then achieving it, not actually getting the fruits of my labor, so to speak, not actually getting the, the bang for the buck, that it got quite bad. And I didn't really recognize at the time how bad it had got. And something that I know we discussed in, in depth was even in my university days, I, on one of the assessments we had, I got top of the class and it wasn't actually me that looked it up. It was my friend that had a look and he came and told me and 
I can't remember the exact score, but it was 90 something. And he said, let's say it was 92. You got 92%. That's incredible. And I said, oh, amazing. What was the 8%? That is how bad it got in my head to the point where I automatically was going to the things that I did wrong or the things that could have been better rather than being really proud of what I had achieved. And I think that, again, that always stemmed from this idea that at the time I was moving towards a career in sport and exercise science, working in a professional football team, that was, again, knowing it was a very fast-paced, dynamic, like difficult industry to break into. So it was the pressure of the fear of, well, someone else, somewhere else has probably got the 100% or a higher score. And therefore, I'm not going to be good enough. I'm not going to be worthy and I'm not going to get to where I want to be. And as you worked through that, what changed? I started to recognize that I am enough, that the fact that I've been through the process, the fact that I have achieved some incredible results with clients in different areas of life, wanting to achieve different goals, meant that I was capable of actually serving them. And as long as, again, I'm in alignment with my values, the things that bring me fulfillment, and I'm operating in a position where I'm serving them to my absolute greatest capacity, then I'm able to help them to achieve phenomenal things. And that, again, success is very subjective. Like success for me might be different to success for somebody else. So again, coming back to what I said earlier, having that North Star, really recognizing what actually matters for me, it shifted my perspective a little bit. And I think I stopped trying to live life in alignment with other people's goals and values, which I think is very easy to do with the world of social media. Nowadays, you just see the best of the best. You see so many things. I think as a coach, you've got quite a warped perception anyway, because a lot of people, they follow a lot of other coaches. So you see all of the things they put out and then you start to think, is that something I should be doing? Instead, I stripped it all back. I got clear on what I wanted to do, what I actually wanted to achieve. And then it again, gave me a little bit more focus and direction, which I think was a bit of a game changer. Absolutely. And once you start to get clear on where it is you want to go and why you want to get there, then the whole game begins to change. And that was a wrestle, but you got there. You did that work. You put in those the psychological hard yards. And I think something that comes up a lot is imposter syndrome and having enough evidence that is undeniable. But I actually think that's bullshit because I've worked with some incredible incredibly successful people and they still don't believe the evidence you can have all the evidence in the world but deep down if you don't back yourself you don't back yourself to have control in the fear of the unknown if you don't back yourself to deliver enough quality out to the world then you're always going to have that and all the evidence is just superficial you had evidence to suggest that 92 percent is a great score but you couldn't accept that you went yeah but i must have missed eight percent a good healthy balance is both. 92 is great. I'm going to celebrate that and be really proud of that. I'm just going to see what other tweaks I could make. And it's getting to that place where you're balanced, you're calm, you're in control. You know what you're about. You know where you're going. I think you've done a, a great, great job at that. If you look back to the Kyle at the beginning of the process, what would you say to him? What advice would you give him knowing what you know now? It's such a cliche, but I think I would say to actually trust the coaching process in regards to the experience that you can obtain as you work with more people, as you do more things. And I also think, again, it's just so important to actually know who you are as a person and who you are as a coach, because within the field of coaching, Different people will do things in different ways. Like there's lots of ways to get to the end result. It's finding what's right for you, what you actually stand for, the way in which you actually want to help people to achieve incredible results. And I think, again, that clarity is so important because one of the things I wanted to get out of this whole process was just being more level-headed across the board. And again, keep coming back to that idea of clarity. I think that is the most important thing because... Otherwise, I would just go throughout life being so jumbled. So I would just try and actually say to him to take the time to get clear, to remove the noise, and then actually be able to focus on putting one foot in front of the other and allowing, as I say to my clients and I have done from day one of coaching, allowing the compounding effect of those daily actions to generate the results that you really want to see. 
that's it. And this is where I get frustrated, particularly with people that say my way is the only way, my way is the only way, my way is the only way, because there are millions of different ways to get to the end result. And it's doing things in alignment with who you are, doing things authentic, authentically, and not being afraid to fuck it up. And if you can do that, and you can have that time and that space and that knowledge and that wisdom to just go, fuck it, let's go, then that's okay. But often it's the fear of judgment. It's the fear of not being perfect. It's the fear of what if it goes wrong? Once you start to learn that it's all a game, it's all an experiment and it's what we make of it. That's really what changes the game the most. Um, so what does life look like for Kyle now having put in those psychological foundations? Cause we're now, I think two or three months after you've graduated the, the evolution program. And you've taken a break, so you can go and really put these in. And if you look back to, oh, wow, actually, yeah, looking at it right at the beginning in the middle versus where it's at now, what are the key differences, would you say? I would say I'm definitely a lot more adaptable and resilient now because I was very set in my ways, as in I had my set environment. I did things in one set order, and that was what I felt comfortable with. Whereas when we went throughout the process, I moved from Liverpool back down to the Southwest. Then I moved from the Southwest out to Marbella. And then I had to move back after using up my 90 days, but we won't go into that story. And I'm now finally back out in Marbella again. So there's been a lot of traveling and transition and changes in environment. And I'm definitely a lot more able to deal with that. There's still better days, days than others. And in all honesty, I think there always will be. I find that when I have got a lot going on, if my workload significantly increases, that's when I need to actually take the step back. I need to remove the pressure. I need to actually prioritize my tasks in order of importance. Whereas before going through this process, I used to almost add a task on that day. And I think it had to be done on that day rather than actually being realistic with how much I could take on and how much energy and mental bandwidth I really had to be able to distribute. So I'm definitely a lot more level-headed. I definitely feel more in control. My coaching communications have come a very long way. And I now have these set anchors across all areas of my life. And I often say to clients that there's going to be different challenges, hurdles, obstacles that crop up in your future. So when you have those anchors, you have those things you can lean on that just enable you to feel in a better place physically, mentally, therefore be able to serve yourself, to serve others to your greatest capacity. And that's a phenomenal thing. So there have been times even since leaving um, the evolution program with yourself that I have found I've maybe pushed a little bit too hard with work. I've maybe got a little bit too carried away and I had to recognize that. But the difference is now I have the self-awareness and I have the tools in my toolbox to actually say, okay, cool. I've got some red flags going on right now. Pull back, come back to baseline, get the routines back with training, nutrition, sleep, stress management, whatever it might be, tighten the screw and then keep pushing on. That I didn't have before. I was working seven days of the week, every day. I was constantly feeling like I was switched on. I didn't really have the differentiation between train by topping and Kyle topping because I was just constantly thinking about content and business and growth. And although that's important, again, finding a little bit more balance across the board and taking sometimes a couple of steps back to then go further forward is something that again has come out of this process. And this is where we talk about independence. So we build independent leaders and we want to make sure that none of our clients get stuck in dependence of, ah, oh, we need to be, we need, 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 like I can't possibly live without a TMP coach. And sometimes it's a case of, of letting the client go out into the real world and out they go and they go out and experience it. And sometimes they come back and they're like, I've got more work I want to do. And sometimes they go, no, I'm good. But you almost have to trust in, in your coaching process that you're building independent leaders. And I think, you know, we're always going to be challenging ourselves. We're always going to be pushing the envelope. We're always going to be getting to that space where we start to slip on our boundaries. But it's being self-aware enough to catch that. We're always going to have limiting beliefs and thoughts and feelings coming up. But again, it's being self-aware enough to catch that. So as I hear that now, although we haven't spoken for a couple of months, just hearing that the independence is really starting to shine through. It's just more evidence that, you know, we've been able to really build that individual and that leader that can self-manage and self-sustain versus becoming dependent. Because whilst dependency is very, very good for a business model, they're not the individuals that I want to build. 
the individuals that we want to build at TMP are individuals that can stand on their own two feet. And is there always new levels? Absolutely. And do we get clients coming back because they recognize, right, for me to get to this next level, I need to overcome these personal hurdles or these psychological challenges. Always. I always have coaches that I go back to and work with and work through things as they, they come up. But ultimately, that comes from a place of abundance and growth, not out of a place of neediness and, and dependence. You've done a great job now at being able to self-regulate your emotions, self-regulate your being, being aware of, oh, perfectionism starting to sleep in. That's that's not helpful. Dial that back. Or, oh, I'm starting to overwork again. Let me just pull that back to go steady, to go, go steady, to go fast. And ultimately, it's about consistency. And a big part of consistency is going from dependent to independent. And then the next phase is interdependency. So interdependency is I can do this independently, but I know that one plus one equals three and not doing it on my own. So now seeing your growth and seeing you develop and actually stand on your own two feet is really, really powerful. And now going into that next phase, it's about curating a boardroom that enables you to stay independent, but also give you the knowledge and the wisdom to accelerate that process at such a speed. And it's something you should be really proud of, mate, because not as many individuals always get to that that uh, independency, if that makes sense. They stay dependent. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate that. And I think, like you said about the boardroom, it's incredibly powerful when you've got people around you that operate with similar values and they operate from a position of just integrity and, again, authenticity. And I think we were speaking about this before jumping on the podcast. It's something that I'm always really drawn to. It's something that I always loved about the relationship that we have is that, we can be open and honest with one another. And also there's so much that you can learn about how other people operate and the different ways in which people approach situations. So I agree in regards to the fact that creating confidence, control and autonomy within individuals is an important part of the coaching process. And another thing that you really helped me with was about my mindset around when people like graduate a process and a program and recognizing the fact that You will get people that are still achieving incredible results that, of course, they want to stretch out the time horizons. They want to keep going through the interlinking phases. The longer you commit to a coach, the coaching process, obviously, the better the results are going to be. But you'll also get people that get to the point where they've got what they came for. Before, I would, again, view that negatively. I'd think I had done something wrong when, in reality, you helped me to switch my mindset and recognize, well, no, I've actually done something really well, I've actually given them what they wanted. And I've gotten to the point where they don't feel that they need the coach to continue progressing. And that's a, a beautiful thing. So yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. And look, you know, you're there for a chapter of a client's life. You're not there for the whole book. Your job is to make that chapter as powerful with as much change as possible. And that's it. So when they look back in 10, 20 years time, They look back with a glint in their eyes and goes, you know what? They were good people. They really helped me. They really changed the game for me. They had my back and they enabled me to get to the next level that took me to the next level that took me to the next level. And that's something that's really important here. I want everybody to look back at that time with TMP with a glint in their eye, like, wow, they really helped me. You know, they were good people and they were fucking good at what they did. And that was cool. And when you can take that mindset into all of your client relationships, sometimes you Well, the question what we always ask at TMP is, well, does this serve the client? Does it serve the client to keep them on longer term? Or actually is that our selfish needs? Does it serve the client to actually challenge them? Or do they actually need an arm around the shoulder? Does it serve the client to, we've got obviously the TMP course and the app, but does it actually serve them to have tons more content on there? Or actually is it just the things that move the needle that needs to go on there? And yeah, when you can get to that place, the game completely changes. So talk to me, Kyle, ignore us as an organization. What does the phrase total mental performance mean to you? If you had total mental performance, how would you know? I would say it would be having that structure, that organization across different areas of your life, feeling that you're clear in what you're doing in where you're going and you feel in control regarding the decisions that you make and you're able to actually just operate the different things that you do from that position and therefore you're able to serve the people that you are working with to your greatest capacity and you're able to continue evolving and going throughout life and climbing up the different levels and really looking to achieve incredible things love that kyle where can everyone find you 
So the best place would probably be Instagram at trained by topping. That's where I'll be the most responsive. Okay. All right, mate. Well, look, it's been a pleasure and honor having you on the podcast and, and, and coaching you as an individual. I'm very proud of everything that you've achieved and how you're now standing on your own two feet going off into the world, mate. It's incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, I'll probably be in Marbella uh, in June time. So if you're around, mate, we'll have to jump in, go for a coffee and, and, and get a training session in. Uh, guys, please share this podcast. Please put it out onto, onto your stories. The more that we can get this message out to the world, coaches are not alone. Entrepreneurs are not alone. That thinking, feeling various different ways is okay. But what's not okay is not working on it. What's not okay is actually procrastinating on it and actually putting in the psychological graft to build leaders of tomorrow. So team, big love, and I'll see you all in the next episode.